Hi everyone, you're watching Chemistry with Kat. Today, we are going to stem off of yesterday's lesson on solubility and learn how precipitates form and how to determine if a precipitate is forming. This is a super popular test and exam question. Let's go. A precipitate can form in two ways. The first is if two aqueous solutions have ions in them that bind together and then become an insoluble compound or molecule. The second is if we change the temperature of a solution and all of a sudden the solubility changes. The first situation with ions binding together is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video and also what you'll be asked on a test or an exam. One thing to note is that precipitate is a noun and a verb. The noun is a precipitate is the substance that forms in an aqueous solution that isn't soluble. We call that the precipitate. And then the verb is like a precipitate reaction where we're forming an insoluble compound. Precipitation reactions are used a lot. We use them in real life to purify substances, remove or recover salts, make pigments, and conduct qualitative analysis about what our solution contains. Here's the equation for my first reaction. When we're asked to find if a precipitate forms, we have to look at the products and see if any of them are insoluble. So we have to go back to those solubility guidelines that I gave you in my last video. If you need a refresher, here they are. When we look at that table, we learn that sulfides are insoluble unless they're bound with a group one element, a group two element, or the NH4 cation. In the case of sodium sulfide, sodium is a group one element. So that will make sodium sulfide soluble. So we know that that is not a precipitate. Now let's go back to the table. The table tells us that all hydroxides are insoluble unless bound to a group one ion, the NH4 cation or the barium cation. Unfortunately, calcium is a group two element. So calcium hydroxide is going to be insoluble, form a solid in the solution and be the precipitate. So this reaction does have a precipitate and it's calcium hydroxide. Here's my next equation. Let's look at the products. The first is cadmium sulfide. We already learned that sulfides are insoluble unless with a group one element, a group two element, or the NH4 cation. Cadmium is a transition metal, and that means it's in the middle of the periodic table. So unfortunately, this molecule will be insoluble and will be a precipitate. Just for fun, we'll look at potassium sulfate. According to the table, sulfates are soluble unless they're bound to calcium, strontium, barium, or lead. Potassium is not on that list. So potassium sulfate will be soluble and we can put a little AQ there to show that it is in the solution. Like I said yesterday, please memorize this little chart, especially if you are going into first year university because you're going to get questions like this and they can be easy marks if you just have this memorized. The only thing they're testing you on is your ability to memorize and those are your easy questions. So memorize it now before school starts and you'll be in great shape for the fall. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Starting tomorrow, we're getting into acid-base chemistry, which is one of my favorite units. I hope to see you there.